my understanding of it was kind of a generational understanding. I mean, we grew up with supermodels that, you know, it was the thing to have the tiny little waist and be the perfect Barbie doll little figure. And if you weren't that, then you weren't a sexy woman. So, I mean, I think it was a generational thing that was just kind of pounded into the head. I mean, because I'm not afraid to say, you know, I'm 51 years old. And during when I was growing up in the early 70s and 80s, you know, that that's all we seen was, you know, a sexy model with a tiny little waist and, and big boobs and nice little butt, you know, drinking a Diet Coke or, or smoking a cigarette. You know, that that's all we seen on TV because we we were the first generation to probably, you know, have the TV as our babysitter. So that that's what was ingrained into our head. We got to look like that. We got to look like that girl on TV or the magazines that we all read. Um, my gosh, like Tiger Beat and all those different things we used to read that we save the pictures on our walls of the people that we want to be and make vision boards. But I think it's a more now that I've gotten older that it doesn't really matter what everybody else thinks of me. It matters what I think of me. It matters if I take a look at myself and realize how far I've came, that I used to be the fat girl. I used to be the introverted, shy person that never stood up for herself and never said no, that gave in to everything. And I made myself very unhappy because I lived for others. I gave one of my friends, she was going through something like that where she was battling body image. She thought she was um, becoming obese. She isn't. But in her mind, she thought that she was, right? But she gained a couple of pounds and she didn't like the way her clothes looked. And one thing I did as a joke, I told her that, you know what I do is anytime there's a part of my body that I don't like, I give it like a fancy name. So for example, if your stomach's getting a little bit bigger, you call it a love pouch. The bigger the pouch, the more love you have inside, right? Yes. And she started to do that, but it was like a humorous way, but it was a way to lessen the stress, right? Like someone will look at their arms, I'll have a little bit of fat under my arms, someone look at their belly, their legs, their whatever. Now, we appreciate fat as long as it's in certain places. <clears throat> so, for example... Big boobs is fat. Right. Right. A big butt is fat. Right. Now, these days, you can inject whatever it is you want into them. So maybe they're not always all fat, but they're supposed True. to be, right? <laughs> it's the waist that I guess throws a lot of people off, but it looks unnatural, right? When they have the very tiny waist and then the big hips and then it flares out. What I think we have to get back to is not necessarily saying that, okay, you're overweight and obese, yes, these are medical terms, but let's figure out how healthy you are, right? Are you a healthy size 10? Are you a healthy size 8? Are you a healthy size 14? Are you an unhealthy size 2? Are you an unhealthy size 4? There was a time in human existence where when you looked at someone who had a little meat on them, you knew that was a good thing because when you're looking to maybe mate with them and for them to build children, they have something to protect the child, to help with that pregnancy, right? So I think we have to find a balance. I think we've gone too far the other way. And this is something that impacts women so much more than men because women in general viewed as visual, like, um, beauty objects, where men are viewed as financial objects, right? Like in general, look for men for, okay, what can they provide? Look for women, okay, how feminine is she? How nice she looks? Things of this nature. When you mentioned that you're able to overcome it and you wrote a book about it, take us through the book. Is it tackling some of the social conditioning that is placed on people or is it more so maybe your experiences and how you were able to combat that? I think my very first book that I wrote, Phoenix in December, is mostly about my earlier years and how I combated being fat, how I combated feeling disconnected from the world, how I combated feeling alone 
um, how I combated, you know, also, I wasn't not only the fat girl, I was also the fat Pentecostal girl. So I had two things working against me. So I also combated that with, you know, more writing, more music, more singing. But um, in, in my book, you know, I talk about, the loss and the grief and it's kind of like a loss of yourself but i also talk about making new steps making new beginnings trying to find yourself again trying to find love and trying to find beauty in the world trying to find something every morning to wake up and be grateful for and not being so hung up on what you don't have and what you don't look like because to me, I mean, my favorite poem in my book is dreams and dreams are all about what our subconscious, you know, is not allowed to express or think about during the day. So in our dreams, we can be whoever we want to be. 